Before we start, I just want to let you know that this episode is going to be a little bit different. Instead of having a roundtable discussion, I interviewed each guest separately, and then I compiled all of their answers into this one podcast. So this episode is going to be a bit more streamlined, but it'll still have all the stories and anecdotes. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. Hello, Hello and welcome, welcome to, to the, the Human, Human Talk, Talk podcast, podcast, the podcast, podcast where humans talk. This is an interview-style podcast where I ask our guests questions about anything and everything. I'm your host, Jacob Walker, and today I'm joined by the 2020-2021 Colorado State Volleyball Champions, members of Rampart High School's volleyball team. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm great. I'm doing great. Every member of this team contributed their time, effort, and skill to lead to their victory. As with every team, there are multiple members and contributors, and today, I have Riley Simpson. I have Parker Hamill. I have Ashlyn Fair. I have Shakti Ganesh. Although this past year was full of change and confusion, Rampart's volleyball team was able to come together and beat out a multitude of schools to become the state champion. What, what, was, that, what was your gut reaction when you actually won? We all kind of like dogpiled, and I, I definitely started crying, like all of our hard work this season um, as a team a season that was like ridiculously crazy. Um, some stuff we'd never expected to happen, happen. Um, so it was really just like, wow, everything you did was worth it. Kind of relief and just joy overall. It honestly, it was like unbelievable. Like it, it sort of was shocking, even though obviously you saw the score, but like as soon as the ref blew the whistle, it was just amazing. <laughs> it's like, just a flood of emotions. Honestly, it's kind of weird because it didn't really feel like it happened just because everything happened so quickly afterwards, like graduation and everything. But it was awesome. And I think it really just, I don't really know how to describe it. It was just like surreal because Rampart has always been a bubble team, like just really, really getting really close to like winning a state championship or really close to like making it to state and qualifying. Um, so I think it was really fun winning it and finally like just establishing like hey we're here and we can win like our school is good enough to win it was so sick i mean i loved watching all the girls take our school to the championships it was so fun to watch i'm so proud of them did you get to be there for the final game like were you there during the state champ yeah, i actually got to watch it it was so amazing they did so good all the team and the coaches came in and did a huge dog pile hug whatever big thing and then we took 12 thousand pictures i swear <laughs> and then we went to the fans and it was great our stands were packed especially since you know we were in the springs um so we had like a pretty good student section and then you know all of our families i wasn't too focused on like them you know um i was kind of just focused on us celebrating with my teammates and my coaches you know they started chanting like i believe we just won and we were like yeah we did and then um once we got the trophy and the banner riley had the trophy and i had the banner and we just like ran over and like we're sh like shaking it in the air and everybody was like screaming they were so excited so it was it was really awesome like other sports did you get to pour all of the big like tub of gatorade onto your teacher at the end or was that like not allowed because covid no we didn't because um i don't know if anybody was thinking of doing it but first of all we don't we don't have that on the sidelines oh. um and then also we're on a sport court um so like it would be a pain to clean up and it'd be all like sticky and also i think if we did that on coach she would laugh, but then she would like not be happy. So like with a lot of stuff this year, how did COVID affect your volleyball season, the way that you played, the way that you practiced? Well, off, the biggest thing obviously was wearing masks, which wasn't horrible. It just got annoying after a certain point. And a couple matches ended up getting canceled either because we had COVID and quarantine issues or the other school had COVID and quarantine issues. Like there was one game our school got shut down two days before, so we couldn't practice before our senior night. I think that's the biggest thing was getting games canceled and having to wear masks. So we were at the gym, we were getting ready, we were in the locker room, we were all getting pumped up. Our coach walked in and was like, "You got, we have to leave right now. We're like, what is happening? They're like, the, the team just got their test result back. Two of them are positive. We need to go home. <laughs> I was like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> So we got, we were in the locker room for like 45 minutes, getting ready, getting pumped. And then she just came and was like, we're not playing, go home, goodbye. And I was like, <laughs> we didn't reschedule it or anything. And even our other game that got canceled, didn't get rescheduled. <laughs> and we, like it sucks because our season is significantly shorter. 
but even so we played like 14 games and last year we played 30 not uh, not much really changed like we didn't have to clean any of the balls really afterwards we didn't have to social distance obviously during practice like, and all of that that'd be kind of hard to have like a 50 foot <laughs> volleyball court where you're like oh, it's mine it's mine and you have to sprint <laughs> half a mile to grab the ball i got it i mean cold, cold. i mean your cardio would get really good you'd have some <laughs> gams huge Dude. legs oh my god the calves would be massive ginormous <laughs> exactly so i guess it, it, it would be okay It'd be beneficial in some areas and not beneficial in others, you know? It's like exactly. a, it's a balance. Exactly. <laughs> the biggest difference was that we played in the spring and that our season was much shorter. So usually we play, um, you know, we have open gyms and training all summer leading up to the first day of school when we're already set on teams and then just start practicing. Um, so we didn't have that this year. We didn't have as much preparation going into the actual season. Um, and then, like I said, our schedule was super short. We didn't get to play any non-league games. Um, so we didn't get to play like any Denver schools, which was really difficult because, um, you know, we were looking forward to playing those schools because they were more of our skill level and they would push us more. And just getting outside of Colorado Springs would have been fun. But then you have like the obvious stuff not being able to have team dinners. Um, so it was difficult, like we couldn't really have a lot of that stuff that I usually look forward to in the fall of getting to know each other better, wearing masks, which was terrible, but you know, we all got through it. It was a, you know, it was a barrier at first, but we kind of all were like, we're gonna have to do this and it sucks, but oh well, like we wanna play. It was more just of a pain than anything. Um, and like for me, I'm a very, vocal person on the court so I was kind of you know talking and then my mask would fall down and I just have to pull it back up or like irritating you know than anything I would definitely say games were better than practices um because you know games you have that five seconds in between the serve um to like take a deep breath but in practice it's just go 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 I know uh everybody has a different motivating factor to play volleyball to make it to state to win state but what motivated you what still motivates you to strive to do the best you can in volleyball honestly I think I would just say like I'm really competitive and I always have been because I'm the youngest of four we were always like scrapping for things and like they raised us in a really competitive culture in our family. So that I think has just been my main like motivating factor. Just like, I hate losing. Like I, this is like something I don't pride myself on, but like, I think I'm a really sore loser. And so like, I just, I don't know, I hate losing. So I'm, that's my motivating factor, just like win. And like, like, obviously it doesn't define you if you do lose, but I think like learning from losing is a big thing too. Have you been doing, how long have you been doing volleyball? Uh, I've been playing since seventh, well, I've been playing clubs since seventh grade. Okay. So, so a long time. Yeah, really long time. But I also did like pre-club stuff before that. But I mean, I don't really count that. It's well, you don't like, count hitting the ball at the Y and like falling over after you hit the ball. No, that doesn't count. count that. That's just a part of the process. Yeah. Volleyball only becomes legit when your head is bigger than the ball. So <laughs> for me, yeah. it was when I was three. <laughs> Were you trying to get any of those awards or did it just kind of come after this success? Um, honestly, like, obviously I'm always working hard to like be the best I can be. So like in that regard, yes, I was like trying to win them, but I wasn't ever thinking like, oh, I'm doing this to win this award. Like I was just thinking like, oh, I'm just playing. No, I didn't get anything for any of the awards. It's like a title, but oh, actually yeah, I did. So for the... Gazette player of the year I got like a newspaper article like a big segment and then actually for m multiple of my awards I got like like news segments or something mm -hmm. like that but nothing like tangible if I can so. find that news article it'll be in the description of this podcast just if anybody wants to read it I was close with several girls on the team and there would be a lot of like frustrating moments I feel like they had and um I love just talking to them, like hearing what they're going through and trying to like guide them through it. Cause volleyball is such a mental game. 
that it's so easy to get inside your head. And if you don't like have the proper communication with someone, then you can definitely like get on your head in the court and like mess it up even more, you know? I started playing volleyball in sixth grade for like a wide team. It was terrible. I had like pink knee pads. I'm so embarrassed like looking at Those are fashionable. What are you talking about? I'm wearing some right now. <laughs> so then seventh and eighth grade, I played like for my middle school team. And my coach there, Mr. Kinsey, he, his daughter was, I think at the time she was um, the Rampart Libero. So that's the same position I am. Just looking at her, I always, you know, wanted, I knew like that's what I wanted to do. And that's where I wanted to be in my life in the future. But he, he instilled like a lot of confidence in me. He would always be like, this is the future like Rampart Libero. And I'm like, you believe in me, like, thanks. My freshman year, I started out on C-Squad. I started out, I was on the team with Shock and then Ruby and Kyla, who are also on the state winning team were on C-Squad with me. So just, you know, being in the same gym as the varsity athletes, looking up to, I looked up to the Grace Wilkinson a lot. She was the libero when I was there my first two years. I was just like, that's the type of person I want to be. That's the type of player I want to be. My whole life, my goal was really just to be on varsity. Part of it was me wanting to have bragging rights. I, that sounds so selfish, but it's so true. <laughs> Like, I, th I just thought it would have been really cool just to tell people, oh my gosh, hey, I won state with my team. Like, this was sick. But it was also, like, the drive that everyone else had and all of the coaches and then all of the support from, like, our AD and the school and, like, families. Like, that was a huge part of it. Just sort of, like, I don't want to let them down. I want to make all of them proud. So I think that was definitely the biggest thing. Like, and we, for our regional tournament, we had a bunch of complications and issues, and thank goodness for our AD who fixed all of that with us. And if it weren't for him, we wouldn't have even made it to regionals. So a little shout out to Andy Parks. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Parks, Andy Parks. That's what the ace D stands for, Andy DeParks. The <laughs> right? Was there anything that you got to do as a team to like, bond or connect not really honestly because last year bef the night before every single home game someone would always host a team dinner and our coach this year was like we can't do that <laughs> which at least from my experience that was the biggest way of bonding with teammates I don't really talk to so that was pretty unfortunate, but we also had bus rides and we all had to carpool everywhere. So I, that was sort of a good way to bond with small groups of people. I think overall the team dynamic, we were all pretty social, so we all could talk to each other. Right, there was that, there was that communication aspect that didn't need to be grown throughout the year, especially because you guys kind of knew each other already from past years. Yeah, most of that team was on varsity last year there was three four new girls and that was it which compared to years before especially two years ago everyone was new on that team besides mm -hmm. two so it just kind of <laughs> like ramped up to having a really great team yeah and a lot of the girls have played together for two three years at this point so i think also the experience of that also made it a lot easier for them to all of us to bond and create that friendship mm -hmm. it was different this year there was like not as many opportunities to bond as a team but yeah fort collins was definitely a big one because like we had to spend three or we had to spend five hours on a bus together like going there and back so it was like yeah it was a lot <laughs> But it was really fun, and, like, it was cool to get to know everybody. Um, and then another one I would just say is, like, the week of practice leading up to state. It was just really fun. And, like, every, like every year um, we at Rampart, we've done, like, a dinner before state. We get, like, Olive Garden catered to the school, and then we, like, sign these little picture frames and then, like, just do kind of, like, our last hurrah before we go to state. And so, um, yeah, we did that. So that was a good bonding moment. And then just, like – 
before the games always like while JV and C squad were playing it was really fun to um just like get to know new people and like hang out with people the energy on this team this year was just a little it was like a little different and I liked it it was a, it was a good difference mm -hmm. but I think that it really helped us bond our bus ride up to Fort Collins so so we were supposed to play um we were the number two seed overall in regionals so we were supposed to host at home Fort Collins and Regis Jesuit. So Izzy was actually going to be at a club tournament when we were supposed to host. And we were like, okay, that's not going to work because she's our only setter. Like we need her to set, you know. Right. Basically, you know, Mr. Parks was doing a lot of back and forth. Props to Mr. Parks, but Coach was really the one that was down Mr. Parks's throat. So props to Coach. <laughs> We were trying to get them, it was supposed to be a Saturday game, and Izzy left, was going to leave, like, Thursday night, because she played Friday. So we were trying to get them to come down, like, in the middle of the week. They were like, yeah, like, we'll do that. And then all it seemed like was Fort Collins found out that if they would come down, they would face us, you know, full strength. So then they were basically like, actually, no, like, we're not going to come down. So we were like, okay, cool, cool. And I remember, you know, Mr. Parks was like, so, like, they're not going to come down, so we're going to play them on Saturday. And I was literally like, can we go up there? Can we go play up there? So then, like, that night, Coach texted us and was like, okay, guys, we're going to go play up there Thursday so that Izzy can play with us. So that whole week, we were kind of just, like, PO'd and, like, ready to play because we were like, we'll beat you anywhere. We came up with this saying, like, we'll play you on the moon. Like, we don't care where we have to play you. We'll play you anywhere and we'll still beat you. I mean, that was really <laughs> our mentality, especially, like, walking into that gym. But our bus ride up, you know, Fort Collins is pretty far. So we left around, like, 10 and got there at, like, 1, 1.32. The whole ride up, we, we went out to eat. And then we were, like, stuck in traffic. And we were, like, what are we supposed to do? So everybody was, like, doing their own stuff. We were playing, like, heads up. And then Ruby kept, like, sticking her head out the window on the interstate and, like, trying to get truck drivers to, like, honk at us. That was hilarious. And then Ange and I think Ashlyn were, like, flipping a coin and, like, calling if it was heads or tails. And they were, like, getting so much joy out of it. I was like, what are you guys doing? Yeah, it's, so a, just, it's a rudimentary a form of, of gambling. It's fun. Yeah. It's so much fun. But it was, it was a lot of fun because that was, like, one of the first times we were able to, like, all hang out together, um, you know, together, not playing volleyball. So that was definitely, like, a lot of fun. Did you win? We did. We, um, we played Regis first, and we took care of them pretty easily. I can't remember the scores, but I think we held them to, like, under 16, all three sets. I could be wrong, but I, that's just what I remember. And then... Fort Collins, that was a little bit more of a challenge. The sets for Fort Collins, I think they were all pretty pretty close. I think they got up to like 23 one time. I feel like we won 25, 23, and you have to win by two. So, right. that, was so that was a really close win. Yeah, but I just never felt like we were going to lose. I mean, I was always like, we took care of them at, at Fort Collins. Of course, we would have liked to do it in front of our home crowd, but... We didn't really care. But it's okay. The bus ride was worth it. You know, Ruby was exactly. sticking her head out the window like a dog and everybody was exactly. flipping coins. It was a good time. Yep. That's... I'd also like to mention that their mascot is a lambkin. What is that? I have no idea what, uh, that what is. is that? A lambkin? It's... Yeah, Google said it's a baby lamb, which makes no sense because but... the lamb is already a baby. Yeah, and like a, a, like a goat's baby is called a kid. Anyway, lambkin? That just sounds like those stupid munchkin dolls or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, my our our mascot is the Beanie Baby. Uh, it's yeah, my favorite. But it... <laughs> it was really funny. One of the one of our fans in this um, crowd, the other team was serving, and then he timed it perfectly, and he just screamed. He's like, "Wait, what the heck is a lambkin?" And the girl missed her serving. We were all laughing. Oh my goodness! So hard. <laughs> I mean, the other team was pissed, the other fans were pissed, but we were just dying. Yeah, we beat them in three. Basically, it was just like we play best three out of five. So, we beat them in three and it was... So they didn't lose a the game. Way. You didn't lose a game. Yes. 
What is the best brand of volleyball? Mikasa and Molten are both my, they're, they're my favorites. <laughs> Why? Why are they your favorite brands? They, they, they just, they're just, they don't suck. <laughs> okay, yeah, that would make it my favorite too. If they didn't suck, that'd be kind of cool. But what about them doesn't suck? Compared to other volleyballs, what doesn't suck about them? Well, first off, there's some like there are some balls that just deflate so fast and like no one knows why. They're not one of them. They're perfect. Yep. <laughs> that's it. That's the whole that's it. They just don't deflate. Oh, uh, they look pretty. The the leather on the outside is cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They look like a flower, and they feel like a volleyball, and, and, that, and that's why they are my favorite. You have it perfect. Definitely Wilson, 100%. Why? Why, why, why? Because of the movie, duh. Duh, Castaway, <laughs> exactly. you know? I mean, Wilson is just, nothing could be Wilson. No. Is there a certain texture, like... Uh, grippiness that you like in a ball? Or is it just like, I like Wilson because I'm sorry? Wilson! There are, boys volleyballs are like really hard and like, um, they're actually pretty unique. Those are, are awful to play with. Like, are they like, are they bigger or are they just like tougher leather? You can knock tougher. on it. And it's like definitely leather. They're more like, how do I say this? Airborne? <laughs> They, like stay in the air longer or they just are like yeah our uh, our volleyballs are so cool that they float i don't know it's just i hate playing with boys men's volleyball but wilson is just it's perfect everything about it is perfect no i don't think anything would beat it all right then wilson yeah. okay so probably molten why molten or tachikara why I don't know, something about the molten ball. Like, I play with them here, too, so it's, like, they just, like, I don't know. When you play volleyball for your entire life and it literally becomes your job, like, you just, like, know. Like, there's, like, a certain way that you can, like, like, okay, so here at Baylor we have balls um, that are, like, we call them, like, the good balls and then, like, the bad balls. The good balls are, like, the, like, squishy, like, they're just, like, perfect and then the bad ones are like dry. They're like a wet soccer ball. The bad ones are, you know, mm. so they like suck. So we don't like those, but the molten ones are just like the good ones, you know. That is a very interesting way to describe a volleyball, a wet yeah. soccer ball. Yeah, like a wet old soccer ball. Those ones suck because when they hit you, it's just like, oh my God. So what's the best texture for a ball then like on the outside? Um... Well, most of them are, like, smooth. If they've been used a lot, then they're really, like, rough and that. they can, Those balls can be good, but, like, I don't know. The smooth ones are a lot better because, like, it's just more comfortable, I guess. I don't really know. Those ones, like, the smooth ones are just better for serving. Like, right. you really don't notice the ball at all when you're playing. I would probably say Molten or all of the ones I have at my house are, like, off-brand. Like, I got them from doing volleyball camps, like, around right. spring. Um, but I would say Molten or Wilson because, like, I love Wilson. I love Wilson, Wilson too. Okay, so. do you have a bias because of Castaway, or is Wilson just a really good volleyball brand? No, just because Castaway. Yeah, I think that's about it. But I feel like our ones at school are all... Mm, no, I think they're Tachikara. I don't know. It really, to me, it doesn't depend that much on the brand, just, like, the texture mm -hmm. and inflatedness. So then... So, like, What's the best kind of volleyball in your eyes? So it has to be like soft. It can't be like um, like uh, like plastic on the outside fabric, and then like not like it can't be too inflated. Um, what I always say is like you have to be able to because um, when you think about it, like you hit a ball with your hand. So it has to have like a little bit of give, um, like in the inflatedness, if that makes any sense. Are boneless wings chicken nuggets? No. Why? Because boneless wings are seasoned. 
chicken nuggets are like just plain like chicken nuggets are just plain boneless wings are usually tossed in like buffalo sauce or something mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so if i yeah. were to t- okay are unseasoned boneless wings then nuggets yeah i guess so, so so if i were to take a boneless wing and a chicken nugget and dip them both in barbecue sauce are they in essence the same thing or does it become a wing because i've put sauce on that boneless wing nah they're just the same thing i don't really know yeah it just becomes i guess it's a wing when you like toss it in the sauce ah so is uh if tossing it in the sauce makes it a wing is like a bone in chicken wing also a nugget without sauce or does that become a wing because it's got the bone that's like literally a wing oh okay yeah okay literally like anatomically a chicken wing okay okay yeah you got me it is a wing wing yes why that was fast they're just chicken nuggets are just like they're just chicken like basically ground up chicken fried boom chicken nugget that's exactly what a boneless wing is but with sauce on it you don't have to dip it in yourself it's already on it fair yeah because they're oh no how do i describe this I mean, chicken nuggets don't have bones in them. Like, it's just... Right? What are chicken nuggets made out of? Yes. Why? Half the time, they don't look like wings. They just look like clumps. So, I would categorize that more as a nugget rather than a wing. Because, like, for real, how is a chicken supposed to, like, they don't fly, but they, like, jump off the ground, you know, in the air with their wings. Right. Are they supposed to do that without bones? Like, that's not going to happen. So you can't say boneless wing. It's like a oxymoron. Boneless knee. Like, that's not a thing. So, in that vein, if you find gold and it has a bone with it, would you call it a gold wing instead of a gold nugget? First of all, um, I don't know. Second of all, I don't think that would ever happen. All right, let's just say for the the purpose of this hypothetical that it actually does happen. Okay, I would say if the bone was like inside mm-hmm. the nugget, sure. Okay. I would call it a gold wing just for you, Jacob. Oh, thank you. Thank you. See, semantics <laughs> really get on my nerves sometimes. I just needed that one. I needed that win. <laughs> what color is nothing? Black. Why? Because it's nothing. Wait. Okay, in my brain, black is nothing and white is everything. But I think it's the opposite. (laughs) Like, actually. Like, isn't black the combination of all the colors and white is the absence of color? Technically, but, like, is light light? Like, white is light in my brain. So when I think of everything, I think of white. Because, like, when you're blinded... All you see is light. But, like, the way I think of it, I also think it's black. Because when you look out yeah. into space, white is the stars, while black is just the continuation of space. Yeah. And there's... That's black. Black's my final answer. Clear. Why? Like, nothing. Like, there's nothing right here, but it's, like, clear, and I can't see it. So it's translucent. That's a very interesting answer. I've never heard that one before. That's cool. <laughs> what have other people said to that? Uh, white and black. Because when you close your eyes, it's black. And then when you get like flash banged or it's like really bright light, it's white. So you don't, you can't see anything, but it's black or white. Does clear count as a color? I don't know. Does it count as a color? I feel like I've always th- thought of like white being just a blank. Like pearl white like just like the empty white void of nothingness yeah. mm-hmm. or if clear was con- i don't know if it's considered color no. i don't know if it is can you paint clear like because people have definitely painted like their version of nothingness before oh true oh right because like there's like people who they paint it, would... it and it's like just an empty hole or something and it's all black or they paint all white and they're yeah. like I would nothing. probably switch my mind to black. 
because if when you like close your eyes you can't like see anything right right and i can't i count that as like nothing right i'd say black or Why? white which um, one which one you gotta pick one black or white black like, they're the both the two ends of the extremes the spectrum yeah i was i'd say black because like when you close your eyes like it, it's dark you know right it's just like the epitome of nothing um and you know white and other colors are only available to the human eye when there's light mm -hmm. so if there's no light then everything's black and it's just like nothing you know if you think about space like the farther and farther you get away from a star and you know what we categorize as nothingness is black because we can't there's no light reaching it you know, right now space nerd answer space nerd answer so were there any team songs that you guys listened to together? Like when you were practicing, working out, anything like that? Was it just like, yeah, we're listening to We Are the Champions on repeat every single time? Towards the end of the season. So um, everybody, C-Squad and JV season ended our last game. So LP. Um, and then we were the only ones in the gym for two or three weeks, two and a half, three weeks. Coach let us listen to music like over the... Mm -hmm. uh loudspeaker like intercom riley's kind of been always in charge of our music she's just you know she has spotify premium she has a speaker and stuff she gave me her speaker so i can take it over next year but i'll probably still use like her mixes anyways right. <laughs> but one song that i really always consider to be like the anthem of rampart is that one fergie song okay now i have to look it up it's not Fergalicious, right? Yeah, no, this, really, it's Fergalicious. this really embodies Rampart. Fergalicious yep. definition make the yep. boys go loco. That's the song? Yep. yep. So we always, it's ever since my freshman year, it's been playing like on our warm ups, like when we play against other teams. Um, so it's honestly just like fun. And like when we're listening to songs at practice, I'll just like start singing them while I'm playing, you know? But it's just like one of those songs that I always am like, this just makes me think of like volleyball and warming up with my teammates. Oh, my f absolute favorite song that we listened to was Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. That's a good one. That's a good <laughs> it's one. A, it's a good song to begin with. And then I think it was me and Riley. We just started singing our hearts out to that song. It was so funny. <laughs> and then like halfway through the song, our coach called us in for just like to talk or whatever so they paused it and we're just like oh during this song wait they stopped you now yeah that's rude and don't stop me now i cannot believe it that's like the one thing that you're not supposed to do stop don't stop me now yeah don't stop me now they stopped you now <sighs> that's a shame rude rude very rude <laughs> I think that song played many, many times. It was great. I don't know, but we have this tradition of for warm ups, we always play Fergalicious. And we'd always get so insane during it. Fergalicious was always just a, it was a classic song to play. Everyone would be rapping to like the rap part, and the gym would be just so hype. Like, even everyone in the crowds would just be dancing. It was, it's just such a memorable moment, like a really good way to start off a game. We do it during like hitting lines, so there'd be like Ange and Riley just slamming balls and then it was so hype. It's always so fun watching them play. There's not really one song, but like we would listen to this one playlist and it was my grad party playlist. And like, I just had it, like we would just always listen to that during practice because like for a majority of the season we wouldn't have music, but like in years past coach has let us play music in the last two weeks right just to like get excited and like get ready for regionals and state and everything and so um i just remember like i i had all these country songs on there because i love country music and everybody would be like i hate this like this is so bad and i like i love this it's so good but yeah so we would just play that playlist i don't remember like one specific song but that playlist was kind of fire the music at the grad party was pretty good 
I know. It was blessing. It was so good. It was good music. It was definitely <laughs> def- it was something to play volleyball to. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thank you for listening to the Human Talk Podcast. A huge shout out to everyone involved, including Parker, Riley, Shakti, and Ashlyn. If you enjoyed, remember to come back next time for more Human Talk. <laughs> I, I don't even know much about volleyball. I feel so bad interviewing all these volleyball people. They're just like, yeah, and then we spiked the ball to the libero, and the libero <laughs> hit it back over, and they flew the ball all the way across. Yeah. And there were like 18 sets that we had to play, and it was totally wicked. And I'm just sitting here like, mm-hmm. D- did you hit the ball?